107.3 KFFM Middays with Sarah J. So Mental Health Mondays is powered by Comprehensive Healthcare, but I have got some heavy hitters in the building from Comprehensive Healthcare. We've got Edie Dibble. Edie, what do you do? I'm the chief operating officer. Ooh, and Ron Gengler, am I saying that correct? Very good. Awesome. Yeah. And your title? I'm the chief medical officer. Perfect. So every week we, or every month, I should say, we cover different topics coming into the holidays. There's a lot of people that might be feeling a little lost in the sauce and they're they're feeling like maybe, you know, they want to reach out to somebody. And so I wanted to have you in here so that way we could kind of talk about the actual process, like the reality of what it is when you're calling comprehensive health care. And I was using myself as an example and anybody that's, that listens all the time, you've heard me talk about, I was trying to get into comprehensive health care and then my insurance didn't cover it. But Ron, you had a really good suggestion on what the very first step would be when you're thinking, I need some help and uh, my family's not the, the person to talk to. I want to talk to a professional. What would be the very first step that you should do? Well, the very first step for me is to pull out your insurance card and flip it over and look at the phone number. There's always a phone number and a website address and call it or go to the website and find out who's on your insurance panel. There's going to be multiple people within the valley where you live that's going to be covered. Hopefully Comprehensive is one of them. If not, that's okay because we want to make sure that you're getting good counseling services. Perfect. It's a process and it takes some time. So be prepared that this isn't going to be, I mean, unless it is an absolute emergency situation, you do have a phone number. Do you have that available? Well, if it's an emergency, we hope people call 988. Yes. That's, that's the most important number to remember. You're going to get hooked up with the, the National Suicide Hotline. You're going to get hooked up with experts who are going to be able to walk you through to help you determine whether we need to go to the next step and actually have you seen by a crisis responder. Here right. In town. Right. So no, you're not alone. If you are feeling completely overwhelmed, I get it. It's it's tough when you're trying to like you call and then you have a voicemail and then you wait and then you reach out and all of these things. So thank you both for for coming in because you also were mentioning that there is a, a shortage. Is would they, would you say it's a national shortage for providers? Yeah, I would say employment for all all businesses are experiencing a workforce shortage. I would say healthcare is significantly impacted. Why are you so quiet? Gosh dang it. Okay, that was my bad. So let's say you, you flip over your card and comprehensive health care is one of your providers. What would be the next step that somebody, if they're, if they're wanting to, to reach out and get some, some help? You have options. You do have options. Calling the main office number is one. Which is 509-575-4084. And what takes place when they call that number? They will do a simple screening trying to get, figure out where to get you, where you are located. We have lots of offices throughout seven counties, so they'll try to figure out which is the best location. They do have to do an intake process or evaluation to see what program you're the best fit in. They will verify your insurance up front. We are focusing primarily on Medicaid today with the workforce shortage, though we have clients with commercial and Medicare, Medicare Advantage plans as well that we continue to see or have three coverages. So if Medicaid is secondary or tertiary third. This is not a test. You can't fail this. It's important to be as open and honest about where you're at. So that way, the person that's doing this intake can kind of offer you different suggestions because there actually are different suggestions and and wait periods based on what you tell them, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Right now with the workforce shortage, we can get people in relatively soon for an assessment, usually within two weeks. It's going to ebb and flow with the seasons. Once you're in, then your counselor is going to talk with you about what options are available. And one of the main options that we're trying to help people understand is that group therapy is just as effective as individual therapy. And I can get somebody in for group therapy within one to two, maybe even three weeks at the most, and have a course of treatment for depression, which is about three months, and be done in three months sooner than I can get you in with an individual therapist ongoing. And we can get you in soon, especially if you're in crisis. We're going to see you right after that assessment and see what we need to do for stabilization to help things get settled a bit to make it where you feel much more comfortable. And then also, or you feel, or you feel comfortable for your family member. Now there's hope. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the most important part to instill hope is that the resources that are available work or I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, the groups that we have are good enough for my grandkids. Mm. As you say, grandkids, because it's not just for the adults. It's also you have a full section for kids ranging all the way up to like 18 and then it flips over to adult or how does that work? Yeah, we know biologically that our brains don't stop developing until 25. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. However, the state of Washington and the rest of the world says 18, you're an adult. So, Well, that's a good thing to say, though. All of us at different times feel, <laughs> I hate to say my age, but I'm 40 and I still feel really young. And I remember when I was young, my mom said, I feel 40. So it's like a weird trip. I feel how she is now. It's besides the point. Um, that's great because I... We all feel I've been in the field for 30 years, so. Okay. Yeah. Still have rosy cheeks, though, so I think that's a good sign, yes? I'm working on it, yeah. (laughs) They call in. They tell everything. And I also, I wanted to. They don't tell everything. No. They're very brief questions to begin with to get you set up with the first counselor. But can be tough. Right. Yeah. We have to get as much information as we can without asking the individual to share the entire story. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. We want you to share the story when you're with your, the therapist for the first time. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll get as much information as we can to make the diagnosis for state reasons, for billing reasons, for education reasons. It's really important to know what we're working on. If you go to a doc, they tell you if you have a broken leg. If you come into a behavioral health counselor or a mental health or SUD, substance use disorder, we're going to talk about what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. So there's a plan. We want to have a goal at the end of this. We're open and transparent about what we want to do. And there also is intake for teenagers that are having struggles as well, correct? Correct. Yes. We go as young to about two and a half years of age, mm-hmm. all the way up to celestial discharge. Celestial discharge? Does that mean you're passing away? Yes. One way, but... <laughs> I've never heard of that before. I really, I'm not laughing at death, but I mean, sometimes it gets dark. It's either laugh or cry, right? Right. <laughs> Is there anything else that you really want to make sure that people know? Because comprehensive health care, I mean, you're celebrating 50 years. You are expecting all the way through eastern Washington and like you had mentioned earlier they find out where you're located and so that can make it a little bit easier to see like like group therapy that might be something like I don't want anybody to know my business what would be a couple of benefits of going to group therapy one of the major benefits of going to group therapy is you're not alone yeah I think that's really important and we're humans and humans are not as much a pack animal as some of the other animals in the the kingdom but we still social media has made it a little challenging but But that's still an indication that we're very social. Mm -hmm. And so having the ability to interact with people, you don't share details of your story in group. What you do is you learn the skill sets to manage the challenges of life. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. And we want to give you as many tools as possible. A hammer is not the best tool for everything. Dang it. Okay, that's fair, because sometimes yeah. it'll break stuff yeah, that you you right. just needed a little bit of a tweak. Yeah, and, and that's what this is about. And I made the comment about the groups are good enough for my grandkids. And yes. I'm very serious about that. Mm-hmm. If my granddaughter needed treatment for depression, I would be perfectly comfortable with her receiving the groups that we offer at Comprehensive, as well as the individual. We always want to try the group because of the ability to get in sooner. Again, you develop some sort of collaboration with individuals. That's a big deal when you're talking about trying to recover from COVID and the isolation that COVID has caused Mm -hmm. the world. And and we know that the, the depression rates have increased, the suicide rates have increased. Suicide is number three on the, the leading cause of death for that middle school teenage group. Yeah. Yeah. Substance abuse has increased. Yeah, substance abuse is on the rise. I know you've heard from your show, Fentanyl. You know, we got to do as much as we can. And so a group gives you, you're not the only one there. You're not just talking with a counselor. You're hearing how other people are using their skills. And again, we're not going into the deeps of right. everything. How the skill has been effective this last week. Okay, so tools for your tool belt to help you succeed. And when you have those extra emotional feelings, you know what to do with them or how better to kind of roll through that. Because we all have ups and downs and and in-betweens and all of that business. Are there groups for parents as well? If you've got like-minded people that are struggling together trying to, to figure out what to do with their child who is feeling lost and... The, the groups for parents are a little more challenging because of school. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to find what's the ideal time to find a group with school. You don't want kiddos to be out of school or teens, young adults, and then parents' work schedule. So usually those have been more of a challenge. So the big focus is whether it's depression, anxiety, trauma, is educating the parents. You're probably a great parent. You just have a kiddo that needs a different set of tools that you didn't originally come out with. Yeah. Or your parents didn't have that tool because it wasn't needed. I wear glasses and the state of Washington says I have to wear them to drive. It's a tool. Mm-hmm. I don't think twice about it. Parenting skill sets are just a tool. Mm-hmm. And, and be excited about it because 
you can have five kids and they all may have five different behavior styles. This is very, very true. So there's, yeah. th- I like that because there's nothing about your parenting that is lacking. There's just a bit of information that you could use that will be super helpful. So right. definitely reach out, flip over the card, look at your insurance, know that it is going to take a moment unless there is an emergency and all of that information can be found over at kffm.com. Uh, mental health wise from comprehensive health care that you really going into the holidays, people are going to be listening to this if there was one thing that people could take away what would that be for you hope there is people who are trained to do this you're an an amazing dj and you have the ability to maintain our attention you have a skill set carpenters have skill sets law enforcement have skill sets counselors have skill sets that's what i really want people to understand is it's more normal than we think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have brains and our brains all respond differently and we just have to develop more tools and mm-hmm. that's okay. And not make this a taboo type of no, thing where like not. mental health, everybody has struggles. If you're painting the, and I think social media honestly has a huge hand to play in that because everybody is curating their, their feeds to look perfect and their family is so happy, but they were screaming five minutes before <laughs> they took that photo. Nobody knows the backstory of that right. business. So you don't ask the question. If you think you got a friend or a family member or loved one that is a little bit off and it's been more than a week or so, ask the questions. How you doing? And it's okay to ask the suicide question. It's perfectly safe. It doesn't give anybody an idea because they're already thinking about it. If it's been going on for like more than two weeks, Mm -hmm. this really despondent Mm. ask and you're going to be there with him. You don't have to solve it. Right. That's the overwhelming part. I think people think, okay, well, if I say it, then now I'm responsible for it. You're just opening the door that was already cracked. Right. Yeah. And you're opening it to a hope. Yes. Because there's somebody on the other side who's going to grab your hand and walk with you. Yes. Because we want families to participate. Yes. We don't want to do this solo. As you shouldn't. It should be a a whole family thing. Okay. Eddie, anything that you feel is really important. I just think don't get frustrated when you come in and you see that an intake evaluation is between 60 and 120 minutes, depending on what services you're seeking. It's not the same as physical health, where it's in and out, 15-minute appointment. It does take time to set up that initial intake, and then moving forward, it will be much more simple. Right. So taking a deep breath and being aware that this is a whole process. There are steps to it and it, it will never end, but not in a, like a disparaging, like, oh my gosh, but you will get better and you will have those tools in your tool belt to be able to, to function a little bit better and, and feel not alone. So thank you both of you for what you do for comprehensive healthcare, for being a light, you know, in dark times. Thank you. That's Thanks. very appreciated.